You're in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Hi, folks. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we had Kurt Southerly, who was on the show, to talk about the Maury Island UFO case, probably a hoax, and also about Kenneth Arnold. And during the course of that discussion, we mentioned a Pennsylvania-based UFO researcher named Floyd Murray, who at the time lived in Wayne, Pennsylvania. And now I heard from one of our listeners that Floyd actually died back in 2004. I'm sorry to hear that. He was really a smart guy, very dedicated UFO researcher. And he had done a lot of work trying to learn about the secrets, if there were any, of this character, Fred Lee Chrisman, who was not just one of the people involved in the Maury Island case, but years later was one of the people who was under investigation for possible involvement in the Kennedy assassination by Jim Garrison, the New Orleans district attorney. Really weird. So we're sorry to hear about Floyd and our best to his friends and family. Too bad the news comes to us so late in the game. This week we have Chris on the road again. Almost literally. Uh, on my way back from Lake Havasu, and we're leaving Kingman. Kingman, by the way, folks, is in Arizona. We're out in the country, Indeed. right? Now, you're in a moving vehicle now, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's very possible you're going to disappear. No, I think it's clear sailing pretty much the whole way, so we should be good. Okay, that works. That works. Now, yeah. one of our good. subjects we're going to talk about, just very briefly, and this is an ongoing issue, of course, Mutual UFO Network has had a few changes in leadership. Not too long ago, we had a former director who talked about some unpleasant encounters with MUFON, and he left. And we had Cliff Clifford, who, of course, was the replacement international director on the Paracast. And since then, he stepped down, I guess due to family reasons, and the leadership was taken over by someone named David McDonald, and they moved all the files from MUFON to McDonald's area, which is Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, all well and good. We wish them the best. And then, don't know if you heard this yet, but Jim Mosley is going to be talking in a forthcoming issue of Saucer Smear that David McDonald, amongst his many pursuits in business, he runs a Mile High Club. Did you hear anything about that, Chris? No, I haven't, but it sounds intriguing. Uh, where do I book? Folks, if you don't know what a Mile High Club is, just think of a couple going on a plane and having fun. Not that they don't have fun on planes now, but this is for the well-heeled. Yeah, okay. Okay, Chris is I up for it. After a couple of escapades in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, it may have uh, raided, but... Uh, I guess uh, we're going to have to wait for all the details to come out from Mosley's article, correct? Uh, How much of this has been confirmed, Gene? Well, okay, this is, of course, based on conversations that Mosley had with our friend Lance Moody, who is a skeptic, of course. But remember also that Lance Moody... Oh, oh, wait a minute. This is a Lance thing? This appears to be a Lance thing. And remember, and Lance, by the way, also was the guy who helped expose Phil Imbrogno. So right. it's, well, it's not as if we should take this as being necessarily false. Uh, no, no, I wasn't suggesting that at all. In fact, uh, quite the opposite. I think if Lance has sunk his teeth into it, chances are it's very real. Right. So we're going to have to see about this. This is uh, an intriguing development. I wonder if uh, there are special rates for MUFON members to get their wings, so to speak. Well, I think the only criticism would be here is not that the guy isn't allowed to make a living. And having somebody who may be independently rather well off to head MUFON may be a good thing. This way they don't have to succumb to a third party and certain demands like a guy like Robert Bigelow to fund their research. But I guess they're thinking that someone who's involved in that business, maybe, you know, it doesn't create the same air of scientific research that's essential. I don't think it's a big deal myself. I mean, you don't think it impacts the gravitas? I don't know. You know, that would be an interesting question. It depends on what aspects of the media go after the story, if they go after the story. I wonder if if it costs extra to uh, become a member of the Mile High Club while flying over the Bible Belt. 
Yeah, well, the thing I am more interested in is whether MUFON members get a discount. That's all. What do you, what's your take on it, Chris? Do you think it could cause negative publicity? I think it might make MUFON a little sexier, actually. Yeah, you know, there's kind of this feeling about MUFON that it's old and stayed. It consists of 65-somethings who, instead of attending the Rotary Club meetings, go to a UFO club. And we don't want that. We want to have state-of-the-art research. We want to have something where people are going to use the latest technologies to try to figure out what's going on. In any case, it's one of those things. You know, we always hope, of course, that UFO research will progress in a positive fashion, that people will take the efforts of serious researchers, and we hope that they will not consider them just wacky stories, that there's a serious reason for people to be involved in finding out what UFOs are all about, and because the international director of a UFO-related organization decides that maybe he wants to be in the business of offering people flights to have fun, that's fine. As I said, as long as it's legal, as long as he's making a living, which is pretty hard in this day and age, as most of you know, well, that's a good idea. That's okay. We can dig that. That's going to be, I guess, in a forthcoming issue of Jim Mosley's Saucer Smear magazine. And it's interesting to see how Jim will regard this subject. I think he's going to have fun with it, you know, because Jim has always talked about such things as sex and saucers. It's also fair to say that focusing on what might be the seamy side of UFO research might not attract serious scientists to the field. Maybe it does draw the wrong kind of attention, but of course, with Jim Mosley's saucer smear, anything goes. He'll talk about most anything related to UFOs and a lot of the side issues involving the personalities and the quirks and all that. He's going to talk about that too. So we will have to see what Jim says. The next issue of Saucer Smear. Kind of weird. Kind of fun. We don't know. Any case, we're doing here a sequel, a part two of last week's episode of the Paracast. Our guest was Nancy Talbot of BLT Research, a longtime researcher into crop circles. But she was also talking about a psychic she's been in touch with with a number of years, Robert Vandenbroek, and about his very, very unusual encounters. And as you might expect, of course, when you bring up a person of that sort who does psychic readings, supposedly has seen strange things, photographed strange things, etc., etc., well, you can't expect, of course, that it's going to have, well, kind of a mixed reaction. On last week's episode, we had a little controversial point, and people are making a big deal of here, that one of the people in BLT research, the L., William Levengood, that Chris identified Levengood as a doctor, and he's not. Oops. Yeah, it's, it's an oops moment, but why are they making such a big deal of it? Well, they're looking for anything that can shoot Nancy's work down. She spent 20 years plus bringing the powers of diagnostic science to all these wonderful subjects we cover here on the Paracast, most um, especially the crop circle phenomenon, the uh, unexplained livestock, livestock death phenomenon, and landing trace cases. And Nancy disassociated herself with any mention of Levengood as a doctor years and years ago and, and actually put out, a, I think, a press release or something to that effect. And um, I, I think it's a rather disingenuous of people to uh, you know, just be uh, looking for any little thing that they can to knock down a whole two decades worth of very diligent uh, hard work. That's the point right there. And besides, the text of the letter that Nancy wrote was reprinted in our forums. I guess we shouldn't just keep emphasizing this, but I think people will nitpick and look for anything. And certainly they've yeah, asked some very serious questions about Robert, and we're going to ask those questions too. So we have Nancy Talbot returning with Robert Vandenbroek. With Gene and Chris, you're in. Yeah,
You know, we develop trust in the people we know, but we don't really know someone we can see. That's why I recommend GoToMeeting with HD Faces. It's a simple online meeting service. It's GoToMeeting by Citrix. All it takes is a webcam and a click to instantly collaborate. You can start hosting your own face-to-face -face online meetings today with GoToMeeting. You can try it free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. If you you want to get your website online and you need reliable service, first class service at the lowest possible price, there's only one place to go. Well, DreamHost has a special promotion with our show where they'll offer you unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, one click web app such as WordPress, 24 7 support. You can save over $55. You want to know how? Go to DreamHost.com slash radio, DreamHost.com slash radio. Iodine protection packs from HempUSA.org are now in stock for immediate delivery worldwide. Our iodine protection packs include micro plant powder, green life kelp, red palm oil, and our clear roll-on iodine that will feed the body the iodine it needs. All iodine protection packs are in stock, save you money, and ship for free in all 50 states. Visit HempUSA.org or call 908-691-2608 today. HempUSA.org has a revolutionary wonder food for detoxing the body and rebuilding the immune system. Micro plant powder can help unclog arteries and soften heart valves while removing heavy metals, virus, fungus, bacteria, and parasites. Plus, it cleans and purifies the blood, lungs, stomach, and colon. Keep your body clean with micro plant powder. Visit us at HempUSA.org or call 908-691-2608 today. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. In an emergency situation, would you drink contaminated water? You could if you had the amazing Life Straw from MyPatriotSupply.com. Life Straw is the most advanced personal water filter available today. It filters contaminated water from almost any source. Life Straw is lightweight and compact, perfect for hiking, camping, or in an emergency like a flood. Life Straw is easy to clean, comes with a one year warranty, and has been used worldwide since 2005. Get the amazing Life Straw personal water filter at MyPatriotSupply.com. Plus, check out Survival Seed Vault, 20 seed varieties for only $37.95, Tatler Canning Lids, long term storable foods as low as $69. And much more at mypatriotsupply.com. Enjoy stress free shipping on all orders over $49. Call 866 229 0927 or visit mypatriotsupply.com. That's 866 229 0927. Mypatriotsupply.com for emergency preparedness, self reliance, and food independence. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. Returning with us now to the Paracast, and it sounds almost like a movie serial of the 1940s, you know, where you kind of introduce what happened before as we did in the previous segment, and then you go for episode two. We have Nancy Talbot of BLT Research. She's a longtime researcher into crop circles. And we have someone who is new to the show, but you've heard about him because we've been discussing his various experiences, Robert Vandenbroek. How you doing? I, I'm doing good. So are you also there? We're doing very well. It's raining a little bit in Arizona. 
but otherwise the weather is just great. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you tell us something about where you live? Maybe give our listeners a picture of what the surroundings are like so we get a sense of who you are and where you are. Yes. Um, I, I'm, I'm Robert Vanderbroek. Maybe some people know me, maybe some people don't know me. I live in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, that's, uh, that's a very small country. And um, um, I live in, uh, uh, in, in a very quiet uh, area that's Hoeven. And uh, you have there um, uh, yeah, a lot of nature, fields. It's a small village, and I'm born there, and uh, I uh, growing up there, and uh, they're also starting all my uh, experience with uh, with other dimensions, and it was uh, starting very early when I was young, when I was a child. Um, I will see lots of things. Uh, I will see what I later understand. Uh, dead people and uh, some creatures, and I was feel things. I was read minds from people, and I was think self that it was totally uh, by everyone that everyone uh, was having that, and that it was a normal part of the life. Now, Robert, let me ask you a few questions about this. Okay, yes. how old were you when you first sensed things that seemed to be unusual? I, I have. A a photographic uh, memory. I, I remember myself that I was three, that I was having the first experience, and that was when my parents was bringing me uh, to bed as a little child. Then when I was go away, then I was see figures coming out the walls, uh, standing around my bed. They was say nothing. They was only watch to me, and. Then I was uh, sometimes yelling to my parents and say what I was see, and then they were saying, "Yeah, but there was there was nothing, you know, there was nothing there." And I was sure that I was see that sort of things, and uh, that was a very um, well late when I was grow up. Then I was uh, see more more things, and then I was p- play um, uh, uh, was was uh, a play with a friend of me, and I was see say see that there was standing a man in the opening from the door, and then I was say look there is standing a man, and that friend was say I see nothing, you know, and then I was realized from oh, I have a problem, you know, and then my parents was go with me from institutes. Okay, so you're three years old and you start seeing something and did you understand then at all much about what you're seeing because obviously you're looking at now in retrospect years years later you're seeing gee i saw stuff that was really strange now when you were interacting with your friends as a child you were also seeing strange things other than the physical people Yes, 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 yes. That's that, that's true. And and uh, when I was very young, I was not realized that. Later, I was realized that. Yes, yes. Okay. So at that point, would it be a situation where you you tell a friend, "Hey, do you see that person over there?" And the friend says, "What are you talking about?" Yes, yes. And then I was realized, oh my goodness, there. I was think on that moment, is there something not good in my head? And later, now I understand that it was have something to do with my gifts. I was have a terrible uh, childhood. I was uh, it's, it's, uh, my, when I was young. It was terrible for me. Yes, but now I can handle it. Yes. Okay, terrible in the sense of children playing games with you, or playing pranks, or attacking you because of who you were. And what no, you could do? no, 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 no. It, it was it was for me. Uh, um, uh, very difficult that that um, um, other people was not see that and that in the beginning they was thinking that there was something not good in my head and also uh, psychological people was think that and uh, in in the begin and uh, later yeah there was coming more understanding and they will see that I was say things that that was absolutely true. I was read minds and that sort of things. Okay, but and let now, me ask you about that. Did your parents take you to? A psychologist or a psychiatrist to figure out what's going yes. on. Yes. Okay, and what yes. happened? That uh, the result was that they uh, that uh, they was uh, decide the psychiatric uh, uh, people was decide that I uh, must uh, go to 
een psychiatric uh, child institute en uh, stay there in en uh, that was very difficult uh, and they must put me in a uh, sort of a hospital and uh, that was terrible for me i uh, when they was bring me to it i was try to uh, escape out uh, out the car and uh, every time and around the two weeks i uh, must go to home okay so robert you were in this hospital and then you kept trying to escape yes yes that's that's absolutely true i was uh, it was a terrible time for me and i, I was trying to uh, when my parents uh, my father and my mother was uh, my father and my mother was uh, put me in the car and i was driving with me on the on the highway then i was trying to escape i was found it terrible i was having a very deep uh, bond a very deep uh, uh, emotional uh, connection with my mother and i was then 12 this very um uh, you know very afraid when i was must go to some other place and it was terrible for me i was was um and they and then they was bring me to that uh, isolation uh, place and then i must stay there uh, for a year and uh, uh, that that was terrible for me i was uh, all the time crying and and will go to home and uh, there was also there not understanding uh, it's it, uh, on that place there was sitting childs with 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 terrible um uh aggression uh, that sort of things did and, they attack uh, you at all no okay no, no, so you were kind no. of lucky in that sense this is a year we're talking about here right yes yeah, a year yes, you were in the yes. hospital so and you kept trying to escape Yes, 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 yes. He didn't try to physically escape from the hospital. What he tried no. to do was not go back to it when he would go home. So it was set up here is that every so often he'd go home to visit his parents. He went and every home time they take him back to the hospital, he was freaking out. It was just really difficult exactly. for him. Okay, now I just want to get the clarification. So let's look at the pictures so far. We have our guest, Robert Vandenbroek. He discovers what he says are unusual abilities, powers, whatever. As a child, at 12, he's taken to a psychiatric hospital for treatment and goes back home every two weeks to his parents. What a horrendous experience. We have Nancy Talbot with Robert Vandenbroek. We'll have more coming on the other side of the podcast. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. G-C-N. Great talk radio starts here. Ray Perkins, a reclusive veteran burned out from the Gulf War, lives tortured by relentless, perplexing nightmares. Nightmares of a horrific battle in deep space and of a mysterious woman suffering in agony for her devastated world. A woman not yet born, calling across centuries to him. Then, a coincidence leads him to his destiny, his chance to alter the universe. Attack Attack. of the Rockwell. The former fiction editor for Star Wars and Indiana Jones, Robert Simpson, writes, The soul of the novel Attack of the Rockoids lies in its heart and passion for building a convincing tale of a love that spans the galaxy. A thrilling story. Attack Attack. of the Rockoids is available now. Read a sample chapter and get a special discount off of the cover price at our website, rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Attack, attack of the Rockwoods, a novel in the grand science fiction tradition. Right now, the average family spends one-fourth of their income on food. It's time to cut your food budget in half by using the best, most affordable food on the planet from eFoods Direct. The savings from eating this food will actually help you pay your other bills. Serve these delicious meals to your family tonight for a quick and easy dinner for about $1.25 a serving, compared to over $3 a serving for any other food. This food is compact, making it easy to store some away and will be just as delicious in 25 years as the ones you cook tonight. Is it affordable? Absolutely. The new Alex Jones Family Pack saves you up to 50% compared to other food storage companies. See the comparison at eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex or call 800-409-5633. My friends, as crazy as this world is today, you'd be nuts to not get a storable food supply. 
Give Eat Foods Direct a call and order one of the Alex Jones family packs and test it out today. Start your journey of food independence today at eatfoodsdirect.com forward slash Alex or call 800-409-5633. Hi, I'm Mark Craighead, founder of Crossbreed Holsters. I designed our top-selling holster, the Super Tuck Deluxe, to solve the problems of being poked, pinched, and gouged while carrying concealed. The Super Tuck Deluxe is the most comfortable, most concealable holster on the market today. We offer a two-week free trial and a lifetime warranty. Visit us at CrossbreedHolsters.com. Don't forget, CrossbreedHolsters.com. That's CrossbreedHolsters.com. In a coming apart world, you need something to keep it tied together. That something is Atwood Rope, the highest quality rope made in the USA from exotic braids for military, rescue, arborists, shipyards, tow line, or boating. Quality rope at affordable prices you and your customers can depend on. Find a dealer or shop online at atwoodrope.net. Enter promo code RADIO to receive 100 feet of 550 paracord free with purchase. Atwood Rope, working to keep the world tied together. Digestive health is the key to wellness and elimination of toxins. That bears repeating. Digestive health is the key to wellness and elimination of toxins. And Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse is the key to digestive health. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic, strong enough to cleanse, gentle enough to use every day. Pro-EM-1 is dairy, wheat, and soy-free, contains all natural and certified organic ingredients, contains no preservatives or animal products, supports a healthy digestive and immune system, supports weight loss, improves absorption of food nutrients, aids in controlling yeast infections, is never freeze-dried, and uses three groups of live, viable, beneficial microbes to cleanse and remove toxins. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com, Terraganics.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Pro-EM-1, the raw probiotic. Hi, this is Don Ecker, and you are tuned in to the Paracast. Let me tell you what, you're going to hear stuff here that you probably won't hear anywhere else. Hear that, George Snorri? We return with Nancy Talbot, Robert Vandenbroek, and Robert is telling us about some pretty, pretty <sighs> horrific experiences as a child. You're 12 years old, Robert. You're sent to this hospital to treat what they perceive to be psychiatric problems. Every so often you go back home to see your family, and when your parents take you back, it's really, really difficult for you. So while you were in the hospital, did they drug you up? they give you lots of medication and stuff? Before I was going to the hospital, they was give me uh, uh, very heavy uh, medicines. Uh, that, that was very heavy. That was knocked me very strong out. And then they was decided that I must go to a psychiatric uh, hospital for childs. And then they was bring me there. And around the two weeks, I can go a weekend to home. And then Sunday evening, I must go back. And it was very terrible for me. I was missing my parents so terrible. And then they was bring me there. And I was hold my mother very strong, my hands around her arms. And then must they must took me away from her and bring me to, to uh, my sleep room. I understand it was, it was very frightening for you. Now, yes. you stayed how long in this hospital? A year. A year. And yes. what happened yeah. at that year? Did you just go home? Did they decide, well, you know what, there's nothing we can do for you, that you're cured, what? Then the miracle was happening. Uh, they was tell my parents when I was come in that hospital that I will never ever come home, that it is very terrible with me, and that they think that I must live my whole life in institutes. And that was terrible for my parents, you know. The world that was destroyed, the world, the future uh, vision from me. And then I was um, um, stay there uh, for uh, yeah a couple of months. And then there was a woman there, and she was working there, a nurse. And she, uh, I was very um, of having very, I was very emotional. I was having very big troubles there. I was see, see things, I was hear things, and then I was asked on some nurse there, "Can I talk about? Uh, can can I talk with you?" And uh, she was say, 
um, uh, of course, uh, I must say, uh, I see things and feel things and uh, they think that I'm crazy. But is there maybe something else going on? Can that exist? And um, then she was uh, asked some other nurse to come. And that was uh, Yanni Post, that is her name. And she was uh, sitting by me and she was saying on middle, oh, you are not crazy. I feel on middle what's going on with you. And she was um, bring me a book from auras and from uh, colors around people. I was seated all the time. That was exactly what I was seeing, the things that were standing in that book. And she was say to me, I will save you, and it's coming good. Stay in your rest. It's coming good. I will help you. Now, let me try and to understand this. This is a book that you got that helped you adjust? The, the nurse understood that Robert uh, was just unusual and brought him a book. I think it was about Carrie Land photography, the auras that yes. are around living things. Robert had never heard of this. Seeing it in a book... He then was able to realize, oh, my goodness, this is exactly what I am seeing. So you get a sense, Robert, here that you're not alone in this world. Other people see unusual things, too. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. okay. So yes. you went home at this point, at some point after this year. They decide, hey, you're cured, or did your parents just say, no, we're not going to take you back? What happened? Uh, now she she was say that uh, and they uh, that was very terrible. I I don't know how you say Nancy that uh, when you uh, when somebody they put somebody out his work that they uh, that she is uh, not yes helping. this woman uh, this woman then went to some of the people the doctors at the hospital and made it clear. Uh, that Robert was, you know, had these unusual things that she knew about. And uh, he, she advocated for Robert's sanity. And they fired her. Yes, yes, it was very terrible. Okay, they fired she, her, but you got out anyway. Yes, yes, she was a very gifted woman. And uh, she was sated, that, and they, yes, she was not welcome more. Then I was stay there, and the doctors were say to my parents, listen. When you go farther with Robert in that paranormal world, you know, we we stopped with everything. And my parents was afraid, you know, they was not really sure of of what road they must decide. This, they didn't know what uh, to do with you because you're doing and seeing strange things. So yes, exactly, eventually, exactly. though, they, I guess, had to learn to adjust to this. Now, did anybody else in your family have strange things happen to them? Uh, yeah, my grandmother was have that, and and uh, I, I can tell you very short what's what how I was go go away from the institute there. Um, then my there was dying some aunt from my mother, and right. um, my mother have a nephew, and uh, the woman, the lady, the, the wife from the nephew where uh, he was married with. She was say to my parents, how is Robert doing? And I have some feeling that he is not crazy, but that he has some gifts. And, you know, that was the, the three time that somebody was say that, that, that I, I was gifted. She was saying, I have very strong feeling that I must save him. Go to Rance Hendricks. And she was go come by Rance Hendricks. And, that's, and who is and, that? Nancy, would you explain who he's referring to? Yes, yes Rance that's... is a, a very, he's a spiritual advisor, a very well-known um, and amazing man who has been doing, I guess, readings, you would call it, Robert, readings? Uh, yeah, he, 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 uh, he, he uh, do readings and, and healings, yes. Yes, and at any rate, uh, so Robert's mother found out about this man and arranged to take Robert to Rents, which yes. they then did, and Rents immediately recognized that Robert, in fact, was very much like himself and uh, observing and seeing and experiencing these events which rents as a grown man and a man in practice for many years. And so since then... So he would tell him, to long story short, 
he would explain to Robert these various abilities and what they signified, right? He helped Robert understand them, yes. Okay. Yes, it was, it was very typical. Well, my parents would go to him with a picture from me, and Renz was feeling that I was not self-coming. That was also not possible, and I was in the Institute. And then he was helping me through the picture, and my parents was not tell when they was go to Renz, and I was feel exactly the time and the minute when he was helping me through the picture. I, I was tell that to my parents, and I was shocked. I was say, that's absolutely true. We was on that moment by Renz, and I was feel so deep, very deep truthful love. I was get a sort of telepathic surrogate. Okay, Father. I want to go through into all these abilities in more detail because we're getting them kind yes. of muddled together, and I want to kind of separate everything. So, okay, so you're preteen, you come out of the hospital, you meet this person who kind of helps you understand what you can do. Now, let's look at what you can do, okay, or what you say you can do. Number one is you saw strange people or people who weren't there as a child, and you interpret this as seeing dead people, right? Yes, I, I, when I was a child. Go, I'm sorry, Robert. Go ahead. Yes, when I was a child, I was not interpreted as dead people. I was thinking that it was normal and that it was part of the deal. My you assume they're just regular people that you're seeing. Yes, yes, okay. yes. But now later, I was understand very quick. Yes, they are dead people. Yes. Well, that's a good question too, and I know that it might get more involved. And I'll have Nancy maybe intersect with this. But first, I tell everybody we have Nancy Talbot and Robert Vandenbroek with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo Tote Bag... All sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children. Stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. You go to store.theparacast.com, stop by, and take a shopping tour. Meet Jerry D. Hi. Jerry and his family, like you, are very concerned about world conditions and have gathered many emergency preparedness items, including Turtle Tough shelters. We have added two 24-foot turtle tufts to our supplies and feel very secure knowing our large family is ready for whatever the future may bring. Turtle Tuff shelters are not tents. They are permanent yet portable four-season geodesic frame shelters that are as strong as a cabin at a fraction of the cost and are easy to set up, take down, and move anywhere. Available in two sizes. Get your Turtle Tuff shelter and accessories included at turtletuffshelters.com. That's turtle T-U-F-F shelters.com or call 801-623-3288. That's 801-623-3288. Or see them online at TurtleToughShelters.com. Turtle Tough Shelters, your all-season home away from home. Hello? Congratulations. For what? For losing all that weight. How'd you do it so fast? ASAP. ASAP what? What's that mean? Are you ready to get as skinny as possible, as soon as possible, as simple as possible, and as sexy as possible? I'm listening. Then get with the ASAP program. It's real and it works. No smooth talk, no slick advertising, and no exaggerated claims of success. I've got to know more. Welcome to ASAP, as slim as possible. Whether you have 10, 20, or 50 pounds to lose, ASAP 
is your weight loss answer. ASAP targets the abnormal fat reserves and makes them available to be burned as fuel and contains no caffeine or hormones. Order ASAP at wholesale prices or join the team to share the business with others. Visit GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. Lose weight and look great with ASAP, as slim as possible. Love gardening but don't love seeing your hard work destroyed by wildlife? Then use the number one most effective deer and rabbit repellent you can buy, Plant Skid. Plant Skid repellent protects gardens, trees, and landscaping by emitting an odor that browsing animals associate with predators. So animals avoid plants before they nibble, not after. Plant Skid is made in the U.S. from non-toxic, 100% organic, environment, and pet-friendly ingredients. Other repellents wash off in the rain, not Plant Skid. It's guaranteed to outlast all other repellents. Plant Skid was the first animal repellent to be OMRI listed organic and now comes in liquid spray, powder concentrate, or easy to use granular. Just sprinkle around your garden. For proven protection from deer, rabbits, squirrels, and other small rodents, use Plant Skid. Member tested and recommended by the National Home Gardening Club. Find a dealer near you at plantskid.com. That's plantskydd.com. Ask about our new vole repellent when you call 800 252 6051. That's 800 252 6051. Plant Skid, proven plant protection, guaranteed or your money back. This is Kurt Southern, the author of UFO Mysteries, and you're listening to the Paracast. We return with Nancy Talbot, Robert Vandenbroek. And Robert's been telling us about his experience as a child, and later on you learned or began to feel that the people, the strange people you were seeing that other people couldn't see, these were dead people. Now, is that because somebody told you that? Yes, yes, yes. Also, and I was recognized some people, they was dead. And I was self also know, oh, okay, they are here. And uh, it was for me very uh, acceptable that there is life after the dead. And I was have that experience uh, in, in some nature, natural uh, feeling. Robert. You know, I was not the uh, presence of his uh, deceased grandparents and these were people of course that his parents had photographs of and it was one of the ways that Robert started to realize that some of these people he saw were in fact deceased relatives yes exactly okay yes. all right now in addition to seeing deceased relatives do they talk to you did they talk to you Yes, yes. Sometimes there was talk. Sometimes they were, they was say nothing. But well, there was they were yes, there was there was talk uh, uh, sometimes, and they was say sometimes also things that I must say. And then I was there was come things up in my mind, and then I was know that it was true. And sometimes uh, uh, they was say also many times things. Okay, let me try to understand this know. a little bit further, Robert. Okay. When they talked to you, did you hear something in your mind or did you hear what sounded like a normal person's voice? Sometimes I was hearing uh, really a voice in my head. And uh, many times now when I give readings, things, uh, there is coming a very strong knowing in my head. And the energy uh, used my mind to put some image in it. Here. So, for example... If I was sitting next to you and you're seeing these things, you're getting a reading, I wouldn't see anything, I wouldn't hear anything, would I? No, no. Okay, no, it's no, only no, you no. that hears this. Yes. Yeah, okay, this is not yes. something that transfers to somebody else, it's you. Okay, in addition to seeing or hearing a person who is apparently not alive, what else were you able to do? You talked about reading people's minds. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. At what point yes. did you develop that ability? Uh, that ability was uh, that that was my whole uh, in my whole childhood. I was see you know I was know when people was lying and then I was jumping in to the people and I was say oh he is lying, you know I must do that and uh, that, that 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 was very uh, yeah that, you know that and later I was learn to get feeling for ethic, you know, to learn to took my mouth and don't do that. And, you know, then it was difficult, you know, it was difficult. I was see 
uh, sometimes really what people was thinking. I was, um, yeah, I was know also what was happening in the future. Okay, now let's, they're saying a lot of, of things are coming down the pike here. Let's just try to understand them. Okay, so first of all, you feel you could feel or sense what someone's thinking. Is this something that is based on a proximity? I mean, the nearness to somebody, if you're next to them, maybe you can feel what they're feeling or thinking, or can you do this long distance? Um, uh, uh, both, uh, both, yes, yes. So somebody this, around the this, world who's hooked up to you by a Skype connection, network connection, maybe yes. you can feel what they're thinking, or maybe somebody who's on the road with a cell phone, you can think what um, they're thinking. Yeah, it, it's not that it is technical, so uh, so possible that it, when I walk on the street that I know everything from everybody. That's 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 not true. But when I concentrate myself and when I'm sitting in the reading, I've learned to, to turn it out and on. But when I'm sitting in the reading uh, energy, when, okay, they're near uh, you though. I'm saying yeah. so. For example, not, not always, Gene. Okay, He's, no, I understand that. But I'm saying if you're hooked into, say, Nancy, and Nancy's in Massachusetts, and you're in Europe, can you sense what she is thinking? Yes. Sometimes, yes, yes, yes. And you I have to know the person first. Like, for example, you don't know me. You've known me no. maybe 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes. Do you know what yes. I'm thinking? Uh, not, not on this moment, but I can, when I give you a reading, I, I can, it's... Very strong possible that I know things from you that I can absolutely not know. That I know things from you on this moment. I know things from from that relatives from you, and I know things from the future from you. And I say also the readings are very proofful, and that that they are a very strong uh, example from life after the death. And uh, um, but it's not so. You know, I'm not an illusionist. I'm not a mentalist. You know, I'm 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 real. I'm real. Okay, a mentalist is somebody who is using, tricks. not who's using tricks. It's like the TV yes. show The Mentalist here in America. Maybe you've heard yes, the show. Yes, yes, yes. Right, yes. where somebody who's a former mentalist, just an actor or an entertainer, works as a consultant for the police because he has good insights into people. But if I asked you, for example, hey, Robert, during the course of the show, as yes. I talk to you, would you make an effort to try to think what I'm thinking, try to sense it, and tell me what you find out? And I won't be embarrassed. If you want to suggest Gene, that I'm a that's crazy... that's really not what we set up to do. No, I understand, but, but he Robert says... Embarrassing, embarrassing. I think that, that what Robert wants to do, and what I agreed to do, was to give an overview. No, I understand that, Nancy, events. but hes I'm asking him if he can do it. He doesn't have to do it. Okay, Nancy? Yes. Well, you yes. Know, I mean, it, if he doesn't think problem. he can do it, we're not holding him to the fire here. No, 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 no. No, we, we just say, look, yes. I raised the issue. Can he do it? And this is why, you know, it's a spontaneous show, and we are trying to find out what he can do. If he comes up and says, you know what? Yes. This is, doesn't no, make no. sense. I, I can't do this because I don't know this person. That's fine. I'm not putting his feature on fire. On something else. Yes, but no, 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 no. Listen, listen. It is, it is. Uh, this sort of things is possible. When I get some spontaneous insight about about you, I will say that. But That's it's fine. That's all I'm asking. Chris, you yes. have any questions to ask before we go on? Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say that I think this is a, a really good, um, you know, mini experiment here on the show. I love it when we have interactive examples of a person's uh, talent and insight. And Robert, if you pick up anything about me, what I'm doing, I'm feeling or thinking, uh, by all means, uh, I'd be very happy to listen to that too. But uh, let's, let's, let's continue on now and talk about your amazing uh, abilities that we talked about at length with Nancy when she was on the show last week. So, uh, Gene, where would you like to start? Okay, let's move from sensing somebody's thinking. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, we're not holding your feet to the fire. But I thought it was fair to raise the question. Okay, other than reading someone's minds, you said something about predicting the future. To what extent can you do this? Yes, it is, it is coming uh, spontaneously when I give people a reading. Okay, what you're saying there is spontaneous. You know, it just happens. Yes. Go ahead. Sure. Yes, yes. Uh, when I give people a reading, then I get image uh, from the future, also from uh, the moment now, and also from the past. 
And I is it always that to... person? In other words, that person's past and future, or a general future event? Yes, yes, exactly. Wh which I, one? Oh. Which one? For the person, or just in general? The question, Gene. Pardon? He didn't understand the question. That's why I'm trying to explain it. Okay, is it that person, that person's future and past, or just something in the future that might happen to anyone? No, no it's that future from that person. Okay, yes. all right, so specific to that person. Yes, yes. Okay, so give me an example of how or what you might <coughs> predict. Someone comes to you. Can you give me an example of what you actually predicted about a person's future that came to pass? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I have on my website, uh, and we, we translate it now, uh, we, put, uh, we will put a voice over. Uh, we're working on it now this week and the coming weeks. Um, I have to set up interviews with uh, clients, with people that was having experience with me. That was very proofful, and they tell them stories now on my website, and people can see that also. And there is coming also an English voiceover uh, in it, and then people can hear it. But there are very strange things going on, you know, that that I uh, see things out the future. And that, that it is coming very, very, very clear out that um, that I see what the color of the houses that they get, what the number of the houses that they get. Um, uh, I see so also on uh, health part uh, things, uh, body parts, things, things that will happening in the future. So if somebody also, gets sick, you'll know that person maybe has a heart attack or a broken leg. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And when okay. I say go to the doctor and then they go to the doctor and it's, it's all the time true. Uh, nine from the ten times, it's, it's true. Okay, I'll and tell you also, what, we got to do our break now, Robert. We'll continue. Okay. We have Robert Vandenbroek, Nancy Talbot. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner, and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. We're talking to Robert Vandenbroek, and you understand that English is his second language, but I think he's doing great, because I can't speak your language or any language other than English, which I struggle through. So I think you're doing very well, and we're trying to understand the abilities you have. So the reason I asked about predicting the future is, of course, I can't come to you, Robert, and say, all right, give me the lottery number so when they have Powerball here in the United States and it's $600 million, you can't give me that number. That's not going to happen. No, that's not working. So in, in that way, that's, that's um, you know, they're working only from above for very, uh, you know, for wisdom, for give people wisdom, for give people growth processes, give people spiritual insights. What really is important of about the health, you know, but not uh, of about dead people, of about learning spiritual things. Okay, uh, so they not... can't go in there and say, look, I'm broke. 
Can you tell me how to win this lotto? Can you no, tell no, me? No, 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 you can't help them with the stock market uh, no, and no, stuff no, like no, that. No, that's not, no, no, no. I, that's, that's, no, that's not the world where I contact with have, you know, with the light. I have contact with the light. They don't do that, you know. There is everybody the same and uh, everybody has the same rights and they do only what is really good for you and not okay do you think then and i get the impression of this that when you harness these abilities you say you have that you're talking to some outside power who is feeding you this information is that the sense yes yes, yes. so somebody else is telling you hey robert here's what's going on do you put a name on that person or is it a general feeling uh what, what you mean exactly okay what i mean is is there a specific person uh, what he's going for, Robert, is your understanding of what this energy is, where it comes from, what you would call it, this uh, cosmic consciousness that is what you've told me. That's what he's after. Okay. So yes, basically yes. there is some central repository of information that you're tapping. And I guess the big question I'd ask before we go into a lot of other subjects here is, you are able to have this sensitivity, and other people claim to have the sensitivity. But is this something that can be taught to anybody, or do you have to be born with it? I think that you must born with it, that it is a born right. And you can, people can learn to train them intuition. Absolutely. Everybody can learn to listen to the intuition, to the quiet voice in the intuition. When... You, it's most all the time, the first thing that's coming up in your mind is the truth. When you see somebody, is the truth. When you took the telephone and you will call somebody and you uh, put the number in and the phone is, is ringing and then you can feel most all the time in the deep of that person is home or not home. You get some sad, low feeling. So it's a sense and of go listen to your gut. Yes, yes. And absolutely. try to look into yourself and you'll get an idea of what's going on. That's the sense. Absolutely, of absolutely. Okay. And everybody can learn that. Everybody so you can therefore learn that. don't feel you're necessarily unique. All right, let me ask you about a few other things that we want to get to here. And this is getting to some of the stuff that our listeners are asking about, listeners to our show. And that is here in her appearance on our show last week, Nancy was talking about some very unusual photographs that you took. We're trying yes. to understand them. We're trying to get a sense of them. And there's one where people are asking about called Mud Man. Now, what's Mud yes. Man about? Robert, let me take this one, okay? Yes, okay. Uh, we've been through this many times, Gene, and we don't want to spend a lot of time on I this. I understand, Nancy, but this is, um, we have numerous questions about Mud Man, and a lot of people don't understand it. All right, so let them listen now. Okay. If you go to the BLT Research website and you click on Vandenbroek case at the bottom of that page there are many many reports one of them in particular is called the apparition photos report uh, in this we go into uh, at some length these thousands and thousands and thousands of photographs that Robert has been taking since he was a child okay let's look at the specific uh, ones Nancy if we're going to be short about this Let's look Let at the specific finish. ones. Nancy, so one of the specific photos here is Mudman, or sets of photos. How was it taken? What is it supposed to be of? If you let me tell you, I will. Sure. In part two of the Apparition Photos Report, there are a whole series of photographs which Robert took back in 2004. Many of these photos, not just the Mudman, but many, many other photos... Uh, that Robert has taken, we have subsequently found, or other people have subsequently found, images which existed previously somewhere else. Uh, like in a book or something, which I think is one of the points that being made. But how's the photograph being taken? I'm not understanding this. Me, you take a photo. Oh, wait a minute, I'll sure. tell you. Robert, in this particular case, was up in the middle of the night, as he usually is, alone. And he simply felt a presence. This happens all the time. He started to take photographs, and these images began to appear. There are a whole bunch of them. 
I have included as many as I have on in part two of this apparition photos report. They uh, were subsequently, it was discovered that a very similar looking image existed in a Reader's Digest. Let me be specific because you're not getting to the point I'm trying to raise. I want to understand it here. Think you're trying Did he to see, it. let me explain. Did he see this image or did he just shoot a picture and suddenly it shows up? I'm going to get there. Okay. Let's cover thoroughly some things rather than everything frivolously. The point We're not here, being frivolous, Nancy, here. This is a question that people have, and, and we're if, trying uh, to understand if let me it, talk, okay? I can answer it. The images, in this case, Robert did not see with his eyes. He simply photographed them. He had never seen anything like this in his life. He did not have a copy of this magazine. He had never seen it. And the most important point, because most of the people who are confused about this... They're, they're, what they don't realize is that Robert did not have a computer in 2004. The fact that, that people can uh, replicate or come close to replicating some of Robert's images, the fact that they discover that some of these images exist elsewhere, uh, it, they're assuming that this means Robert is going on the Internet, finding these pictures, and somehow or other putting them on his digital camera. Okay, let me ask you a question here, though. Let's just put this together in a focus. Okay, so he takes a picture, and he sees something in the digital image that wasn't there when he was looking. People who are skeptical of it go say, well, you know, this is in Reader's Digest. Maybe all he did was scan the pictures and pop them in. Okay, he didn't have a computer until July of 2006, but this picture was taken... In July of 2004, one of the pictures that you show here. And not just that one. There okay, are so the point being here the is that picture. regardless of where you may see the pictures, his pictures, the problem with his pictures is that they were taken before he had a computer. Does he have friends who have computers? Does, no. Do his parents have computers? No. Okay, and you know this personally? Yes. Okay, so you know, because here's the problem I think that people have when they look at the pictures themselves. They look like very... Is Gene. Yeah. If you let me finish, I've got something very interesting to tell you. Will you let me finish? Okay, we're going to break in a moment, but go ahead and start, and then we'll pick up on the next segment. The fact that many of the images which appear <coughs> on Robert's camera are subsequently found to exist somewhere is of great curiosity to all of us. The work that we've done so far on images which we did find elsewhere seems to indicate that the photos that come on Robert's camera are not exact replicas. They are alterations of images which do exist somewhere else. Now, let me just give you a little bit of information that's going to help you, and we'll progress in the next part of the segment when you explain this. And that is, let's talk about how it might be done and why people think It was done that way, despite your telling us that, of course, this happened two years before I got a computer. But first, we have Robert Vandenbroek. We have Nancy Talbot with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. Whether it's personal mail, whether it's business email, you want reliable, dependable delivery, freedom from spam, freedom from viruses. Well, Polaris Mail offers professional email hosting services for your personal or small business use. Each account uses 25 gigabytes of storage, an easy-to-use webmail interface, and full mobile sync. Sign up today for a 30-day free trial at PolarisMail.com, PolarisMail.com. So here's what happened. I was placing an order online. The site went down. It just stopped responding. It took hours before it returned, but I'd already placed the order with another company. If your site goes down, you could lose business. And if you have a business or personal site, you'll want to know it's easy to run and it will stay online. At iWeb, your site is hosted on one of the most reliable networks in the world. Check it out. iWeb.com. That's iWeb.com. 
All whey protein powders are not created equal. Fresh liquid whey has been used for hundreds of years to restore health to the sick and youth to the aging. Why is it that no one reports these benefits from today's whey protein powders? It is because they are all processed with heat or chemicals, which damages the protein and amino acids, making them allergy-causing or toxic to your body. One World Whey's True Cool process retains all the powerful properties of fresh raw whey in a concentrated powder. My name is Stephen Hewer. As a degree nutritionist, my goal is to make you healthy in as short a time and as affordably as possible. One World Way is speeding up the process of helping people get healthy and is replacing the need for many other supplements, making it more affordable. To learn how One World Way may help you with fat loss, the elimination of inflammation and pain, detoxification of heavy metals, intestinal health, brain function, and increases in strength, energy, and muscle size, call 888-988-3325 or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorldWhey.com. BePrepared.com is making deals in April because you need to be prepared now and you need to save. BePrepared.com is the official site of Emergency Essentials, a 24-year leader in emergency preparedness supplies. Everything from long-term food storage to emergency kits, water storage and filtration to alternative light and heat sources. What's on sale? Now through Monday, save 28% on a freeze-dried garden vegetable combo, which includes peas, corn, beans, cauliflower, celery, and onions. Save 33% on the Catadine Hiker Micro filter new instant white rice as low as 849 and a 72 hour mre food and water supply a 72 dollar value for only 49.99 and much more at beprepared.com call 800-999-1863 to experience exceptional customer service and our low price guarantee that's 800-999-1863 hurry the beprepared.com april sale ends next monday the choice is clear be unprepared or beprepared.com So you're a maker of something. Woodcrafts, fishing lures, glass designs, jewelry, purses, perfumes, goat's milk soap. Whatever it is, you made it here in America. Now you're eager for people to buy your products right here locally. Instead of buying competing products made on the other side of the world, right? Then you need to check out localmakers.com. Support America. Buy and sell locally at localmakers.com doesn't matter if you're a home-based business or a major manufacturer. Localmakers.com offers an easy way to connect with customers within your local community as well as across the U.S. simply by entering a zip code. And there's no cost to join. So if you're a maker who needs buyers, go to localmakers.com and stock your products on one of our shelves. Localmakers.com. Promoting, preserving, and supporting your neighbor's manufacturing businesses. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We have Nancy Talbot, Robert Vandenbroek, and the issue on the discussion here, of course, is Robert's abilities as a psychic, but also to take pictures. The big argument has been, of course, here that the infamous Mudman photos were taken in 2004, but that he did not have access to a personal computer until 2006. One of the issues, of course, is that the pictures you see are not exact replicas of what might be in Reader's Digest. But let me explain, first of all, why skeptics will make this assumption that that's where it came from. Because you have to realize Photoshop is an application that's like clay. It's a complete image editing application, works on the pixel level, little tiny bits of data. And you can do anything you want with it. You can change colors, you can change shapes, you can blur, you can sharpen, you can create pictures from scratch, you can draw in Photoshop, creating movie special effects, or you can copy and paste from a magazine and pop it into another picture. And it looks like it's there. And it's very easy to do. Anybody can learn how to do that really easily. You can also manipulate the image so it's not an exact replica. You can make the arm shorter, smaller, blurrier, sharper. You understand the point I'm making, which is why they say this, okay? All of this is covered in the Apparition Photos report. Okay, now we need to understand here why you feel this cannot possibly have been done. Now, you're saying, of course, that Robert didn't have the computer, didn't have access to it, that nobody else that he knows could possibly have done this for him? Correct. Okay. Gene, uh, you know, we have to make sure that our, our audience knows that 
many of these pictures were taken on somebody else's camera with them standing right there. That's why I want Nancy to now explain. Okay, we now have the argument. We frame the argument and the skepticism that people have been asking about. I'd like you, Nancy, to explain why that's not so. And just like Chris brought up a point here, that people are standing there, he takes a picture, they don't see anything, and they look at the memory stick and they bring up the picture and there's the object or the person. And what do you want me to do now? Say why I know this isn't so? We want you to explain why the argument that I just gave you, which is essentially the argument that some skeptics are making, why that argument you feel is not true. It's not feel. I know it's not true. Okay. Again, all of this is in great detail in the apparition photos report. If people are not willing to read it, then I have to assume their interest is not so intense. In part three of the apparition photos report is my first experience of Robert doing this directly. I had heard... We haven't finished the other subject. Let's finish that one, then get to the next one. Gene, if you don't let me go, I cannot explain this. Okay, but we're trying to explain this specific item here, this specific set of photos. You asked me to And why it's not, I, it's no, not possible it's not to have so. done that by artificial means. do that. In part three, I describe how one evening I was with Robert in his practice room, and we were photographing something else. He had just learned he could make compass needles go and make metal things stick to his body and stuff like that. And I was photographing him doing that, one night in his office. All of a sudden, we both heard a very, very quiet tap, tap, tap on the door. It was so gentle that I would not have known to pay attention to it. But Robert looked up immediately from his side of the desk, and he said to me, did you hear that? And I said, yes. And I knew immediately that something was getting ready to happen. Robert walked from around his side of the desk, asked me if he could use my camera. Now, my camera is kept entirely in my possession when I am in Holland. I handed Robert the camera. I stood next to him, my head literally abutting his. He held the camera out in front of his face so I could see the LED screen. I could also see the door about four feet in front of us. Nothing but air between me and the door. Robert took one photograph, and boom, this man's face appears on the LED screen, clear as a bell, and yet with my eyes, I see nothing between me and the door. Okay, so let me explain to our listeners what you saw in the sense of what happens with the digital camera. You take a picture, and then you will see the actual picture you just took in the LED screen. I did in that case. Okay, so you're set to look at what's on the memory stick or memory card, the picture you just took, which is a normal way you want to look at the picture and make sure what you took is exactly what you intended. So the room is, nothing is in the room. It's just a straight room, but you take the picture, and then the image that was sensed by the camera comes up on the LED, and you see the figure. We didn't didn't go back and look. Robert took the one photo... We both saw the image. We both jumped because it startled us. And he then, over the next 10, 15 minutes, took many, many photographs in which this man's face appeared in many different forms. Uh, In fact, I'm not even sure it's the same guy in every single shot. But he took quite a few of those. All of those photographs are posted with uh, all the commentary on that Part three, this is, of the Apparition Photos Report. Okay, that so this is the point that has to be emphasized here. Okay, you saw it happen yourself. Then, Nancy. I've seen it happen uh, many times. Nancy, I'm trying to ask you a question, then you can go into that. Okay, so let's just summarize this, because I think it's good that we oh, make every point clear to people, okay? Uh, summarize this. This is a blank memory stick or a memory card that you put into the camera. You sit there, you take pictures, and every time you see the playback on your LED screen of what you just took, you suddenly see figures in there that were not there when you're physically looking at that room. Well, there were figures I couldn't see with my eyes. Oh, that's what I'm saying. You didn't see them. You're looking at the room. You take a picture. It looks like a normal room with nobody in front of you. But as soon as the picture comes up and is presented in playback on the camera, you're seeing these figures. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. 
is this the same point with the mud man photo then the same thing happened that he takes a picture or someone takes a picture and suddenly these figures appear nobody's tampering with your memory stick I don't see how they could since it's in my possession the entire time. Okay, that's what we're trying to clarify. Typically, how is this even possible? You know, some of our listeners may remember the, uh, a fairly well-known case from uh, the 70s of a guy named Ted Sirios who was able to project images onto uh, Polaroid film. Do you think, Nancy and Robert, that this is what's happening, or is there some separate kind of a third-party uh, element going on here? I'm... I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. What do you sense yourself? Because you're the one doing it. I was hearing that that uh, it was a bit uh, global in the talk from who took the picture. This sort of things, this the image that's coming on the pictures is only happening by me. That's also the reason that I get a lot of critic. Is I must hold the camera in my hands and then the image coming on, it's coming through my energy. Okay, so you must be holding this camera when yes. this happens, when these images show up. Yes, it's coming through my energy and sometimes that's working through me. There are now many, many, many cases that uh, people have give me a camera standing by me and the image coming on the pictures. You can also see on my website, there is a new film there that you see that there is a guy do an experiment with me for the camera. He give me his camera. With yes. Gene and Chris, we're talking to Nancy Talbot and Robert Vandenbroek. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. Ray Perkins, a reclusive veteran burned out from the Gulf War, lives tortured by relentless, perplexing nightmares. Nightmares of a horrific battle in deep space and of a mysterious woman suffering in agony for her devastated world. A woman not yet born, calling across centuries to him. Then, a coincidence leads him to his destiny, his chance to alter the universe. Attack, attack, attack of the Rockwell. Rock. The former fiction editor for Star Wars and Indiana Jones, Robert Simpson, writes, The soul of the novel Attack of the Rockoids lies in its heart and passion for building a convincing tale of a love that spans the galaxy. A thrilling story. Attack, attack, attack of the Rockoids Rock. is available now. Read a sample chapter and get a special discount off of the cover price at our website, rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Attack, Attack of the Rockwell, a novel in the grand science fiction tradition. In an emergency situation, would you drink contaminated water? You could if you had the amazing life straw from MyPatriotSupply.com. LifeStraw is the most advanced personal water filter available today. It filters contaminated water from almost any source. LifeStraw is lightweight and compact, perfect for hiking, camping, or in an emergency like a flood. LifeStraw is easy to clean, comes with a one-year warranty, and has been used worldwide since 2005. Get the amazing LifeStraw personal water filter at MyPatriotSupply.com. Plus, check out Survival Seed Vault, 20 seed varieties for only $37.95, Tatler canning lids, long-term storable foods as low as $69.95, and much more at MyPatriotSupply.com. Enjoy stress-free shipping on all orders over $49. Call 866-229-0927 or visit MyPatriotSupply.com. That's 866-229-0927, MyPatriotSupply.com. For emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food independence. Don't answer it. If fear strikes your heart when the phone rings, knowing it may be another bill collector, it's time for you to call Zero Debt in 90 Days. 800-477-9256. Settlements, bankruptcy, and attorneys are not the answer and may end up costing you up to 10 times more than necessary. Listen, if you're already in debt, does it make sense to get buried in another payment plan? Zero Debt in 90 Days gets you out of debt in 90 days guaranteed without a payment plan and without attorneys or going to court. Get the fastest relief from debt on the planet when you call 800-477-9256. If you have debt with the IRS, credit card, student loans, or foreclosure, we can help at Zero Debt in 90 Days. And we're the only organization to provide written guarantees on the results. Go to ZeroDebtGuarantee.com. That's Zero 
ZeroDebtGuarantee.com or call now for free information, 800-477-9256. That's 800-477-9256. Crank up your savings at the Webb's headquarters for hand crank and solar power preparedness. 21stCenturyGoods.com. Save now on solar generators from $289. Solar lanterns, just $24.95. Solar waterproof flashlights, only $12.95. Cook anywhere solar ovens from $279.95. Portable solar panels from 21stCenturyGoods.com give you the freedom to harness the power of the sun to charge your gear wherever you go. Show your patriotism with our line of solar flagpole lights. Plus, find a full line of emergency and shortwave radios, solar lanterns, and LED flashlights. And see our monthly two-for-one specials at 21stCenturyGoods.com. Spelled the number two, the number one, STCenturyGoods.com. Or call 866-999-8422. Spend $100 or more and get a free hand crank solar flashlight when you mention you heard us on GCN at checkout. Crank up your savings only at 21stCenturyGoods.com. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. We have Nancy Talbot and Robert Vandenbroek talking about some very unusual phenomena. And I want to summarize this so people understand what we're talking about here. That we understand that almost any image you can see on a photo or a movie can be duplicated by someone in Photoshop or another program. Okay, you can always reproduce this. There's no such thing as the perfect UFO or psychic photo. Somebody who's talented enough can create the fake version. Okay? So we understand that. At the same point, we have Nancy telling you and Robert telling you that we have a camera. She takes her own personal camera, hands it to Robert, stands there, He takes a picture, and from the LED screen, we see what is recorded is some figure in the picture that wasn't there when you just looked at the room. And it doesn't just happen with Nancy. It happens with other people. Robert's saying that he senses something, and he holds the camera, and holding the camera is what you believe causes that image to appear in the camera. Right, Robert? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. This is what is meant by being a medium Robert is the medium through which these energies work, and they can do it not just with cameras. What we're talking about right now are the photos, but this is how he also can do the readings. It's how he can also do the healings. The energies work through Robert as a medium. Now, let me ask you a silly question, a very dumb question. When... You work with a camera, Robert. Does it have to be a specific type of camera with a specific type of memory no. chip? Can it be an old-fashioned no, 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 camera no, no, with no. film? No, no, no. It's it's uh, it will happening with camera with uh, old-fashioned films. It will happening with uh, digital cameras. Uh, with uh, with all the types of cameras, uh, it uh, it will happening. That was what I try. That was I was try to say you. Sure. When you. Yes, yes. When you watch on my website, then you um, see a clip that's very beautiful. Uh, okay, so we see all eye. these photos, but in every case, and we're going to emphasize it over and over again, you must be touching the camera. You're feeling something when this happens, or can I just go over to your house, bring my iPhone's camera, which is a digital camera, and yes, have you hold it, happening. and I will see yes. something strange. Yes, yes. When when the other side found it good, then uh, well happening. And we have also do an experiment that uh, that you that I was filming all the time. That a guy was give me his camera. He was show for the camera that everything was zero, no image on it, and he was all the time filming me. He was filming first the lens, the lens and the um, how you say the screen from the photo camera, and I was make pictures. I was no one moment lonely, and I was. The point is here is on- you are not tampering with this camera. You're holding it in full view of everyone. It's not just a trick. You're just taking the pictures. No. Yes, absolutely. There's, there's a new report, Gene, that's going up on the BLT website very soon about this specific incident in which we demonstrate that the chip is brand new. 
we demonstrate there is nothing on the lens itself. While the video camera continues to roll, the guy moves back away, keeping Robert on the camera the entire time. He then stands there videotaping Robert as Robert takes three photos in a row. You can hear the click, click, click of the digital. And on those images, there are two men. One is Pat Delgado, the original crop circle person in England from years ago. The other, amazingly, is Dave Chorley, part of the infamous Doug and Dave team, the hoaxing team. And Dave died. <laughs> These two men both appear, one in one shot, the second shot. The third shot shows simply the boy who was filming the whole thing. And that whole report will be going up in a week or so on the BLT site. Well, okay. I mean, Nancy, I have a question, though, uh, real quick. Uh, how about analog film cameras? I mean, is all this, are, are all these digital artifacts, or uh, has Robert duplicated uh, this style of psychic photography, if you will, on regular film cameras with analog film? Did you use film cameras years ago to do this, Robert? In the past, I was used uh, cameras with uh, films in it. But uh, yes, and I was, but that was most all time light stripes and uh, light bulbs. And I was do, uh, there was coming a journalist from a newspaper in the Netherlands and he was bringing a camera with a film in it. And I was making pictures with his camera and there was creatures on his uh, camera and also on the original film. Now, the other question I would have then is, when this happens, do you see in your mind what image ends up? in the camera or you do you sometimes, have just a feeling sometimes you do yes sometimes sometimes I see, sometimes i i don't know it's also a surprise for me sometimes <laughs> yes i was surprised when dr roll came to visit in 2008 because uh, dr roll uh, had this also happen with his camera and him standing right there watching robert as robert did it so sometimes robert you see the image sometimes you don't now Conversely, on the other side of the coin here, if I hand you a camera and you feel nothing, does that mean that nothing extra will show up in the picture? Yes, that's most all the time uh, true, yes. That's, that, that's true, yes, yes. So this is nothing you can turn on like a light switch. Sometimes it no. happens, sometimes it doesn't. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's what I say, you know, I'm, I'm not an illusionist. It's not a, a, a card trick, you know, that you know before that you have results. It's coming or, or it's not coming. It's 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 uh, we have strong scientific cases, very close cases where it's it's in proof that it is absolutely re absolutely real and that it is not Photoshop or that it is not that I hold something for the lens. The skeptics say that I hold something for the lens and that's not possible. Well, here's the key standing. point here, which I gather from talking to you and Nancy is for them to be correct. They would have to basically say you both are lying about what of you're course. doing because there's no way to explain any of this. Because, and they would also yeah. have to say that Dr. William Roll is lying and hundreds of Robert's clients over the years are all lying. And you do understand that, that that doesn't wash. There's, there's too much good uh, eyewitness testimony involving these uh, fantastic uh, images and, and other things that have happened over the years, which, you, of course, you and I know because I've known you for so long. I have read the website. I am interested enough to find out more. These are inexplicable events, many of them, even though some of them look like really bad cut-and-paste Photoshop jobs. It's that trickster element that's trying to nullify what may be very, very important science going on here. You might like to hear what Dr. Roll had to say. Sure, go ahead. He stood, he brought a brand new camera, never even been out of the box, with him to Holland. Then we opened it up, put a brand new chip in it, batteries, whatever, went to the fields. And it's me and Dr. Roll and Robert, broad daylight. We walked to Robert's special field. Dr. Roll had his camera in his pocket. Suddenly, Robert felt the presence of the energies, and he asked Dr. Roll, may I have your camera? Roll handed it to him and stood right next to him, just as I have done hundreds of times, and watched as Robert took immediately five shots of what looks like a UFO. Boom, 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 right in a row. Dr. Roll and I both were watching Robert as he did it. We both saw the images on the camera immediately after None of us has a laptop. We had no other equipment with us, and there were the images. 
Now, the other question, Robert, would be, does this happen in a specific area or does it matter where you are when this happens? It can be everywhere. I, I'm a bridge for the other dimension and it can happening on many places. You have so you feel places. you're talking to something or communicating with something in another dimension that's giving you these images? Yes, it's, it's some cosmic consciousness that's very high, that's, 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 that's very big, and it is only love, only peace, and it will help only people. Now, that's an interesting grow. question, too, because we're getting into a spiritual aspect, and maybe we'll want to explore that a little bit later. But the other question is here, you haven't been around the world much. You haven't traveled much from where you live, have you? No, no, that's right. That's, that's, uh, that's absolutely right, yes. So have you ever been out of your country? Only to yes, Belgium, Belgium a couple yeah. times to do lectures. Yes, that's true. Yes. Oh, okay. We have Robert Vandenbroek, Nancy Talbot. You're with Gene and Chris. You're in. Okay, America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database, so you get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter, and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that, too, in Graphic Converter. Also, print catalogs convert from so many formats, I can't even list them. Download now to see see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You can save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. Me, Jerry D. Hi. Jerry and his family, like you, are very concerned about world conditions and have gathered many emergency preparedness items, including turtle tough shelters. We have added two 24 foot turtle tufts to our supplies and feel very secure knowing our large family is ready for whatever the future may bring. Turtle tough shelters are not tents. They are permanent yet portable four-season geodesic frame shelters that are as strong as a cabin at a fraction of the cost and are easy to set up, take down, and move anywhere. Available in two sizes. Get your Turtle Tough Shelter and accessories included at TurtleToughShelters.com. That's Turtle, T-U-F-F, Shelters.com. Or call 801-623-3288. That's 801-623-3288. Or see them online at TurtleToughShelters.com. Turtle Tough Shelters, your all-season home away from home. Hello? Congratulations. For what? For losing all that weight. How'd you do it so fast? ASAP. ASAP what? What's that mean? Are you ready to get as skinny as possible, as soon as possible, as simple as possible, and as sexy as possible? I'm listening. Then get with the ASAP program. It's real and it works. No smooth talk, no slick advertising, and no exaggerated claims of success. I've got to know more. Welcome to ASAP, as slim as possible. Whether you have 10, 20, or 50 pounds to lose, ASAP is your weight loss answer. ASAP targets the abnormal fat reserves and makes them available to be burned as fuel and contains no caffeine or hormones. Order ASAP at wholesale prices or join the team to share the business with others. Visit GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. Lose weight and look great with ASAP, as slim as possible. Love gardening but don't love seeing your hard work destroyed by wildlife? Then use the number one most effective deer and rabbit repellent you can buy, Plant Skid. Plant Skid repellent protects gardens, trees, and landscaping by emitting an odor that browsing animals associate with predators. So animals avoid plants before they nibble, not after. Plant Skid is made in the U.S. from non-toxic, 100% organic, environment, and pet-friendly ingredients. 
other repellents wash off in the rain. Not Plant Skid. It's guaranteed to outlast all other repellents. Plant Skid was the first animal repellent to be OMRI listed organic and now comes in liquid spray, powder concentrate, or easy to use granular. Just sprinkle around your garden. For proven protection from deer, rabbits, squirrels, and other small rodents, use Plant Skid. Member tested and recommended by the National Home Gardening Club. Find a dealer near you at plantskid.com. That's plantskydd.com. Ask about our new vole repellent when you call 800 252 6051. That's 800 252 6051. One, Plant Skid, proven plant protection, guaranteed or your money back. This is Hilly Rose, and I hope that you do listen to the Paracast because you will learn a great deal about the paranormal. With Gene and Chris on the Paracast. We're continuing exploring the strange case of Robert Vandenbroek with Nancy Talbert of BLT Research. And we're trying to try to focus, put a picture, a mind picture, theater of the mind in radio so you listeners understand what he is saying. Now, you mentioned UFOs, and we haven't touched that so far in the first two-thirds of the show. So let's get into that. Robert, have you ever seen a UFO? Yes, yes, yes. They exist absolutely. I have seen different time. I have seen uh, what people call GFOs, and uh, I, I, it's very impressed. And I have very strong experience and uh, beautiful experience. Very beautiful, very pe- very beautiful, very peaceful, and it's it's wonderful. It's now me, that's an interesting thing here. Anytime you're in the presence of a UFO, you feel peace and love and brotherhood, something very positive. I guess you know that some people who see UFOs don't have the positive experience. Sometimes it ends up being very negative towards them. But you've never been abducted by a UFO, have you? No, I I never, ever abducted. And I don't call it, no, in that way. You, You know you have difference in it. You have more dimensions with more levels and you have also the negative part that's a problem you have also yeah the grays and that sort of types okay so so you feel that gray alien beings whatever they are they are negative is that what you're saying no it's it's not it's not true that 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 uh, every uh, gray of every alien of 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 of, how you call it uh, that it is um, bad but uh, you have some some yeah some some parts in that world that's very negative and you must watch out for it it's not a game they do experiments with people and they see people as uh, lab animals and not more and okay they, but I'm you're not... talking about different levels what about oh, yes. Oh, yes. what about but beings coming from like another me. planet are we talking about other dimensions or do you believe in the fact that we are discovering more and more possible Earth-like planets around our galaxy, that maybe they came from one of those places. I'm sure that there are billions of millions of and billions of planets, eco-planets, eco-planets where life, where is life? And I think that also that lots of GFOs coming from another dimension and they coming from out um, the, the, the GFOs by me they are a sort of light ships for a sort of light beings, a sort of angel groups. They helping. They are a sort of space angels, police. I don't know how to say that. They working on planetary process, not only planet or more planets. But I, I'm sure that some creatures coming from another planet of was living on another planet and you you have creatures they they you know they took people and they took them to them planets and they do not nice things with them okay let me move into a, another area here all right so is it a matter of feeling in your gut whether the alien creature or craft you're seeing is good or bad is that it yes, or can you absolutely. attract the right kind of craft if you have that ability Yes, you, you can feel it. It's intuition. You feel gentleness, respect, or you feel not respect. And then you must make that you go away when you feel that. That's, 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 I will say that to people. You so have if you feel something that's negative, run the other way. 
Yes, yes, yes. You must watch out. You have demons and you must watch out. You Not everything in the universe is peace. You must watch out. But the goodness in the universe is winning all the time. The goodness... Who's sneezing, by the way? Oh, that's a friend of me living yeah, in my house. Yeah, ask your friend to please try to, you know, walk away because I can hear it in the background, okay? One of the points that Robert's trying to make is that he believes and perceives that there are many, many, many types of life forms in the universe. Some of them are of a positive and loving nature. Some are not. He can distinguish between them and chooses to only interact with, be involved with those he perceives to be positive and supportive of, hum of humanity. This does not mean that another sort does not also exist, but Robert chooses to have nothing to do with the uh, more negative types of, of entities or beings. Okay, let me ask you some other stuff, Robert. Have you read books about UFOs, magazine articles, gone online? No, through? no. You haven't? Nothing, no, nothing. It's very, very strange. When I try to do that, I get... Uh, uh, it's it's it come not in me. It's look like of I get a sort of na narcotic. Uh, I can I cannot read it, and I know that they will in the other side that I don't read too much, and I don't read books about it. You know, um, the reason is that you watch to the glasses from somebody else, and I will. Have self this experience and hold it pure. Okay, you and don't want other people contaminating this. Well, he doesn't no, want no, my... people's ideas contaminating what he feels. Just an offhand question that somebody asked in our forums, Robert. Ever hear of Billy Meyer? Yes, of course. Yes, yes, sure. I, What's your I... feeling about Billy Meyer? Uh, it's not my job to 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 taxate some uh, uh, people. Um, I, I know that he he is very strong on on fire. You know that many uh, that some people think also that he is fraud. Um, well, I, in I his think... case, it's been very easy to prove that he's a fraud. We've done it very successfully in the Powercast some years back. We looked at one of his photos that was submitted as something real, and we proved within a very short period of time that it was a complete fake. Yes, okay. Yes, that, that's possible. You know, I don't know him personally. Just I, uh, I don't know what he, uh, what he's doing exactly. It's possible. You know, I sometimes it's more difficult than you think. It's possible that this, that 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 somebody that has real contact, that it is beginning with a real contact, with a real intention, that it is when they feel pressure to prove things and that the audience, the people, the public will more and more. They, they fake it. Fake. They basically have a basically a real experience sometime in their lives. Yes. And yes. then the yes. pressure of the public or maybe they want to be yes. famous, rich and famous, they will fabricate something. Maybe, yes. And sometimes then they decide to help the truth a little bit. I don't say that he do that, but it's possible. It's a possibility. And they do... You see it in the history more that that is that's a phenomenal that that they create some meat around the cell they create some mystery and they will hold it and when there is nothing going on then they yeah they 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 will help the truth and that's sorry that's so sorry once they are real in in the inside they have some they have some real contact you know i i have understand i was hearing from somebody that billy meyer has read a lot of things uh, thousands of pages from spiritual insights that he was get from the pleiadians you know maybe that's real i don't know you know it's 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 very intense when you do that and uh, what's well, unfortunate I, like i said if he really is a genuine contactee by faking evidence he puts everything he does into a cloud, and it's difficult to believe that kind of thing because yes, so it's like law yes. enforcement people say, you know, you lie in one place, maybe you're lying in another place, and that makes it difficult. Yes. Let me ask you yes. another offhanded question here. Of course, you've had medical treatment, drugs and everything when you were a child. If there was enough money available, would you consider submitting to medical testing like an MRI test or something in a laboratory or something while you're undergoing these things so the scientists can measure what might be happening to you? Robert, Robert, yes. let me take this yes. one, okay? Yes, okay. 
He has had uh, a number of such tests, and one, for instance, involved him being videotaped as a, a random event generator was placed in front of him, and Robert was asked to influence the random event generator if he could. The entire episode, and I think it happened several times, was videotaped, and one of these scientists, they do not, they refuse to go public, uh, one of them, whom I know, called me after some of these random event generator tests and told me that Robert was able 100% of the time to alter the outcome of the random event generator tests. Okay, this is something we'll have to pick up on the next segment of the show. I'm going to want to ask you, and I can get ready for the question here, and our listeners are going to ask, okay, if this has happened, why can't we get somebody to go on the record with this evidence so that when the skeptics say, have you done this, can you do this, you can provide the data? We have Robert Vandenbroek and Nancy Talbot with Gene and Chris. You're in the cast. Are you tired of searching for great talk radio? Something more important. Search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Hi, Ted Anderson announcing a great way to listen to radio on the telephone. By calling 760-569-7700, you'll be hearing GCNlive.com programs in seconds. Come to GCNlive.com, find your favorite host's dedicated phone number, and hear them 24-7. You heard me right, every show has a dedicated phone number. Stop by GCNlive.com and bookmark their number today. And again, that's 760-569-7700. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. We have Chris there, kind of sound, and he's, of course, on the road, sound like he's basically in another dimension, right, Chris? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going through uh, a little mountainous area here outside of Flagstaff. One thing I wanted to mention before we get too far away from the, the William Roll photographs and, and the, uh, the, the UFO-style uh, objects that were in uh, some of these photographs, uh, my first impression of them when I looked at them was something very small being dangled in front of the camera. And uh, I think that, that there's one or two people on the forums that came up with that as a possible explanation. Uh, there was another photograph that somebody pointed out on the forum that seemed to have some sort of string line or something that uh, was visible. Uh, does Robert want to, want to uh, care to comment or Nancy on on these uh, the, the logical conclusion that someone on a skeptical uh, bent would say about these small these these small appearing objects in front of the camera? Let me let me do it, Robert. It's what yes. I've already spoken about. The camera, the images they're referring to are the ones that appeared on Dr. Roll's camera that afternoon at the special field. And as I've already explained, Dr. Roll had simply uh, put a brand new chip into his brand new camera, new batteries. We all three went to the field. Robert perceived an energy present. Uh, Dr. Roll handed his camera to Robert in broad daylight with both Dr. Roll and I watching as Robert took those photos. If Robert had been holding anything in front of the lens, both you would have been able to see it. Would have seen it. Yeah. They look the way they do. I don't know. Robert. And yeah, that I was my next know. question. <laughs> well, the, what we've come up with, our understanding of these UFO photos is this. Um, there is another reality, a spiritual reality, 
which is around all of us and very close. However, as we all know, there are many religions with many different uh, images which are associated with those religions. What we think is that the UFO image has become the most universally well-known or accepted image that means simply the other. Not okay. something religious specifically, but the other. It's like it's a cultural consciousness right. taking over. That's, we think the images sure. represent this notion of the other rather than actually representing real UFOs. Although in some cases they may represent real physical present UFOs, most of these images that have been coming on Robert's, the cameras he's using, we think are simply an image <laughs> that helps people understand there is this other reality. It's trying to make us think, which goes back to something that Ray Palmer said many years ago. Don't know if you remember who Ray Palmer was, Nancy. But before we did the break, I asked you a question about the evidence that was accumulated when they did an examination of Robert. Why can't we get something like that publicized? Because I think people are really curious. And this is the sort of thing that when you say, I have evidence, but I don't have permission to post it or whatever, people are skeptical. Yes, as well they might be, but unless many of us are willing to donate uh, money to finance scientists who do this sort of work, most scientists, just like you and me, have to pay their rent, you know, they have children to raise, whatever, and there is no funding available for, to pay the salaries of such people. The people in Robert's case, these two men who have worked with Robert, in addition to Dr. Roll and my MIT photo guy, these other two men, in order to publish what they have observed, they must come up with some sort of theoretical construct and hypothesis, if you will. If you have no hypothesis, if you absolutely do not understand what you're looking at. Right, you can't publish anything because you have nothing really to try to prove. Exactly. And so this is the difficulty. With Dr. Roll, after his experience with Robert, I sat down with him and I asked him, I said, well, now what do you make of all this? He had just spent two days with Robert, watched repeatedly as Robert, using his camera, took all these strange photos, not just the UFOs, but many others, and I asked him, well, you know, what do you think? And he said, I don't have the faintest idea. It must be some sort of RSPK effect. In other words, he didn't have a clue. He'd been standing right there watching. He had no doubt whatsoever that Robert was genuine, that the photos had actually occurred precisely as he had watched them appear, and he had no explanation at all. So it's got to be some sort of RSPK effect. Robert, let me just ask you a left-handed question, left-field question here. Back to your childhood. Before this happened, and you're taking this from your photographic memory, maybe what your parents told you, did you ever suffer an injury of some sort, like when you were two or three years old? Um, what is, what, what do you what mean? Does that mean? Did you yeah. fall and hit your head, Robert? <laughs> well, to be blunt, that or anything like that. No, 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 no. Okay, no, okay. No. So there was no precipitating thing that happened to you to start this thing, except one day you wake up and you see people. Yes, well, yes, it was. I realize that his grandmother and his mother and his sister, his younger sister, all have uh, some of this same, uh, I'm not so sure we should call it a gift, but the same sort of ability. His sister has seen maybe more creatures than Robert has. His mother has seen them as well as other things. His grandmother also. So it appears to be something that may run in his family along the mother's line. Do you find that in your research too, Nancy, that when people claim to have extraordinary abilities, there is the genetic factor? I can't, I, I have heard from Dr. Roll, he told me that. But I myself, the only case I've examined in great depth is Roberts. Uh, so I don't know from my own personal experience, but Dr. Roll told me that. 
Well, okay, so maybe if we go back several generations of Robert's family, if it's possible, we, we find that they have unusual abilities. Robert, have you looked into your family history at all? Um, I, I know only that my grandmother from my mother's side, uh, just the mother from my mother was heaven. She was see dead, dead people sometimes. She was afraid of it, but she was very sensitive. A very there was also hanging around her. I remember that a very positive, very positive, quiet, positive, sweet energy. I remember that, and she was very gifted. I, I'm sure about, but she was do nothing with it. She uh, was also not uh, have the wish to talk about it. She, she um, must. I f still feel her around me, and I know that she was there. Maybe other family members was have it also, you know. But that uh, I know only from her that she uh, she was she was have it also. She was have uh, a beautiful light in her heart, and uh, she's in heaven now. Right? And and I'm happy. That's also her home that uh, that she deserve. Yeah, um, I was gonna. I was gonna say that um, I have noticed in my research that oftentimes there is a history of, of family members uh, in the past that tend to. Uh, it, it appears that maybe passing down some sort of ex extraordinary abilities. Generally, it skips. Uh, it skips a generation, is what I found. And uh, in other words, it's your grandmother that would have the gift, as opposed to your mother. Although both cases obviously uh, have been reported, but I think um, I, I think Robert brings up a good point uh, about the skipping of a generation there. We'd love to have you subscribe to our newsletter. You can get updated schedules for the shows, cutting-edge commentaries from me, from Chris, and special guest commentators such as Kurt Southerly. All this and more, the official Paracast newsletter. Go to newsletter.theparacast.com, newsletter.theparacast.com. It's free. We have Nancy Talbot and Robert Vandenbroek joining us. You're with Gene and Chris. You're in the Paracast. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast Jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. If you're not prepared, get preparedexpo.com, the biggest and best preparedness expo in the USA. Coming April 28th and 29th. Get preparedexpo.com. Over 125 seminars and exhibits, climate change, water filtration, wholesale batteries, freeze-dried foods, MacGyver 101, storm shelters, shortwave and ham radios, solar power, buy your first farm, heating with wood, home defense, ammo, homeschool your children, and teleseminars with James Wesley Rawls, Bob Chapman, and Julia Shopik. Get prepared expo. Expo.com, Ozark Empire Fairground, Springfield, Missouri. Saturday and Sunday, April 28th and 29th. Meet your USA Prepares.com instructors. Vincent Finelli, John Moore, Matt Stein, Larry Pratt, Dr. Julie Pinnock, Beth Ann, David Christopher, Julia Shopik, Robert Allen, and over 30 more. GetPreparedExpo.com. Download program flyers and $8 discount coupons at GetPreparedExpo.com. Don't miss GetPreparedExpo.com. Saturday and Sunday, April 28th and 29th. You may snicker when you hear this message, but you won't laugh after you experience the best kept health secret ever, camel milk. Camel milk is loaded with health benefits far superior to other milk. Camel milk has antibacterial, antiviral, and anti-tumor properties, is rich in B vitamins, and camel milk is three times higher in vitamin C than cow's milk and 10 times higher in iron. 
and camel milk contains 52 units of insulin-like proteins per liter, effectively lowering blood sugar levels. Many of our members testified that drinking camel milk reversed diabetes and greatly improved autism. Camel milk is easily digested by those who are lactose and beta casein intolerant and comes fresh or frozen from your trusted local family farm shipped on dry ice to preserve freshness. Go to CamelMilkForSale.com now and look under Products and Pricing for this spring special with free bonus pints. That's CamelMilkForSale.com, CamelMilkForSale.com. Hi, I'm Mark Craighead, founder of Crossbreed Holsters. I designed our top-selling holster, the Super Tuck Deluxe, to solve the problems of being poked, pinched, and gouged while carrying concealed. The Super Tuck Deluxe is the most comfortable, most concealable holster on the market today. We offer a two-week free trial and a lifetime warranty. Visit us at CrossbreedHolsters.com. Don't forget, CrossbreedHolsters.com. That's CrossbreedHolsters.com. In a coming-apart world, you need something to keep it tied together. That something is Atwood Rope, the highest quality rope made in the USA from exotic braids for military, rescue, arborists, shipyards, tow line, or boating. Quality rope at affordable prices you and your customers can depend on. Find a dealer or shop online at atwoodrope.net. Enter promo code RADIO to receive 100 feet of 550 paracord free with purchase. Atwood Rope, working to keep the world tied together. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. With Gene and Chris, we have Nancy Toppett and Robert Vandenbroek, and we're exploring what he says are the strange things that he does, the strange things he perceives. And I wanted to just ask you a few things about your life over there, and maybe our listeners would understand more of what you're doing. Do you have a day job at all? Do you go out to work? What do you do? uh, You ask it on me? Yes. You have a regular job. Do you work in a restaurant? What do you do? (laughs) No. No, I, I, uh, I, I, uh, I, 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 I help my clients. I, uh, I found it very uh, difficult to ask many people money. That's for me a big problem. I will help them, uh, yeah, very much for free. But you can't and, basically uh, go out to work in a normal job. You have to give readings to people. You can't go out to a restaurant, like no, I said, or a no, plant no, or a no, steel that's, mill or something. No, that's not possible for me. That's that's uh, that's that's. Uh, I, I'm too open, too uh, sensitive, and too that that I cannot uh, do that. It's not. Is my it, there's too many outside job. influences that you sense that yes. make it impossible. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So exactly. The, the question is here: How do you support yourself? Do you receive donations from people for giving them readings, or what? Uh, I, I live from money from the from the government. They have some, uh, 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 yeah, how you say that? Uh, I don't know the word in the English, but they um, then Robert you get. Robert is considered in uh, Holland because he was unable to finish schooling uh, because in school he was constantly assaulted with these images and these presences. Uh, he couldn't pay attention to the schooling uh, because he was, his attention would, would be diverted. And because of this, he wasn't able to complete his uh, standard, the normal schooling. And this then made it impossible for him to actually learn a trade of any sort. And instead, he has uh, used his abilities to do, he's learned how to do these readings and healings. And his father, who is a banker, insisted uh, that people uh, pay for this service. And that money was uh, put into a trust fund to help support Robert. And uh, because the father is very concerned about how Robert will survive. Okay, so basically the government is considering him because he can't complete his education and develop a trade basically disabled. It would, yes. It would be considered a disability income, and we're not insulting the person as a result. We're just pointing out, as a matter of fact, it would be considered some sort of disability income to help people who are unable to go out and work to help them survive, period. Yes. 
Okay. Chris, yes. you wanted to raise another subject. Uh, no, you wanted to raise the issue again about the white powder? I wanted to actually talk well, about the wants us to raise the issue, and what I said was that we've covered it for about 20 minutes, half hour in the last show, so we don't need to go over it. Maybe just summarize it. What I would like to do then is maybe talk about my eyewitness accounts of crop circles occurring when I was with Robert uh, on two different occasions. Uh, Robert is the only person in the world, as far as we know, who knows when a new crop circle is getting ready to occur in his area. In fact, the very first Dutch circle uh, this year in 2012 has just appeared and he, as usually is the case, he and Stan, who was his friend, uh, were at home, and Robert felt the energies, and they went out on Robert's motorbike to some fields where circles have occurred in the past, and Robert thought perhaps that's where this time it was happening. This was just a couple days ago. And they went through the whole area, looked at all the fields. There was nothing there. And so they went back to Robert's apartment, and later that night, just after midnight, Robert again felt this very strong energy. And even though by now it was pouring rain, he and Stan went back on the bike and uh, this time did discover this beautiful seven circle uh, crop circle. Uh, Robert perceived a flash of light in his mind's eye, which told him where the circles were likely to be. And when they arrived at the actual field, he saw with his eyes, this is visual, these seven, he said, mushroom-shaped lights hanging over the field. Robert, why don't you tell him in your own words what you saw? Yes, I, I was, uh, this uh, now two days ago, I was uh, having uh, an, uh, a very restless feeling. And um, I was in the afternoon, I was driving with a friend of me on my motorbike uh, by a field where more circles was coming in the past and there was standing grass and we were standing, we was watching on both sides from the field and there was nothing. And then we was go to home and around 12 o'clock in the night I was get a very restless feeling. I was close my eyes and I was see in a flash that field for me and I was get very strong in my head seven circles seven circles and then uh, it was rain very hard outside and uh, we was waiting a little bit and then around one o'clock in the night we was took the motorbike uh, was with a friend of me and we was driving to the fields and when we was coming by this field uh, and driving and uh, going off the motorbike, then I will see this strange white uh, sort of mushroom uh, shapes hanging uh, seven, uh, seven uh, uh, lights above the field. It was a little bit transparent and with a little bit mist around it. And it was hanging above the field. And when I was walking a little bit closer, and I was not standing in the field. I was see the, that the circles was in the field. You will see the color uh, uh, different. That that it was more shadow shapes in the fields there. And then I was walking in the field, and I was discover uh, beautiful circles that was lay there. And in the afternoon it was not there. And on that moment, well, and it was feeling for me that there was formed maybe an hour for that we was come down and it was very beautiful the energy is very beautiful and uh, I, i'm very happy with it and uh, that that's very beautiful and nancy was years ago in uh, 2001 i think so then uh, she was uh, she with me that the circle was forming by my house in the field, in a beans field. And she was also witness with me. And I'm very happy with it. When, uh, you know, people think that I make the circles. The reason is that I found all the time the circles and that I get a message before with the street name from go there and there, are, there, there is something going on. And then they say, oh, then he made them self. I'm very happy that Nancy was also witness with me. I want to ask you a little bit about your friend, whether your friend has been involved in 
experiencing these things with you when he goes with you. And we'll do that in our next segment, okay? We're talking to Nancy Talbot of BLT Research. She investigates crop circles. But also we're talking about the unusual experiences reported over most of his lifetime by Robert Vandenbroek. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. The GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN. Great talk radio starts here. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter, and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that, too, in Graphic Converter. Also, print catalogs convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com Are you still a traditional smoker? Now experience a new lifestyle and try vaping with e-cigarettes by LeSig. Imagine no ashes, stains, nasty smell, or coughing and hacking. With LeSig e-cigarettes revolutionary microelectronic technology, rechargeable battery, and unique replaceable cartridge, you'll get all the benefits and satisfaction of smoking without the hazards. Choose your taste from a wide variety of our new American-made vapory and e-liquids at LeSig.com. And LeSig smokes the competition by serving thousands of worldwide customers with real people customer service fast free same day shipping and a 30 day warranty and satisfaction guarantee so are you ready for a new vaping lifestyle then call 870-518-4307 that's 870-518-4307 or visit lesig.com spelled l-e-c-i-g.com lesig e-cigarettes for today's modern smoker don't answer it If fear strikes your heart when the phone rings, knowing it may be another bill collector, it's time for you to call Zero Debt in 90 Days. 800-477-9256. Settlements, bankruptcy, and attorneys are not the answer and may end up costing you up to 10 times more than necessary. Listen, if you're already in debt, does it make sense to get buried in another payment plan? Zero Debt in 90 Days gets you out of debt in 90 days guaranteed without a payment plan and without attorneys or going to court. Get the fastest relief from debt on the planet when you call 800-477-9256 if you have debt with the irs credit card student loans or foreclosure we can help at zero debt in 90 days and we're the only organization to provide written guarantees on the results go to zero debt that's zero debt or call now for free information 800-477-9256 that's 800-477-9256 Digestive health is the key to wellness and elimination of toxins. That bears repeating. Digestive health is the key to wellness and elimination of toxins. And Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse is the key to digestive health. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic, strong enough to cleanse, gentle enough to use every day. Pro-EM-1 is dairy, wheat, and soy-free, contains all natural and certified organic ingredients, contains no preservatives or animal products, supports a healthy digestive and immune system, supports weight loss, improves absorption of food nutrients, aids in controlling yeast infections, is never freeze-dried, and uses uses three groups of live, viable, beneficial microbes to cleanse and remove toxins. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganics.com. Spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Terraganics.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Pro-EM-1, the raw probiotic. Hello, this is Rosemary Ellen Guiley, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We're kind of lucky here as we get to the tail end of the show. 
It looks like Chris is starting to get a fairly decent mobile connection. See, that's the next thing we need to figure out here, how to solve the pathetic problem of mobile connectivity in this country because it's really bad. Robert, this friend of yours, what can you tell us about him? How long have you known him? I know him now for five years. And um, he uh, was... Nancy know him also, and he's a very sweet, sensitive person. And he was first, when he was uh, meet me, he was first uh, a little bit skeptic. You know, he was know a lot of uh, mentalism, a lot of tricks. And he was think, mm, I don't know if it is true, but he was know me from the Dutch television. And he was think, I will have contact with him. And then when he was go with me in a friendship, then he was changed his mind very strong. And I was get in some evening very strong the feeling that I must go to the fields. And we was go to the fields and we was seeing light bulbs above the fields and they was forming right before his eyes, also before his eyes, a crop circle. And that was for him a point from whoa. This is real. This is absolutely real. And this is, has changed his life. He is also a witness. Also Nancy, also Stan, this, uh, this friend. And that's, that's beautiful for me. I'm is very Stan happy with Is right it. there with you, Robert, now? Yes, yes, you yes. you think he would be willing to tell what he saw? Yes, that's possible. Yes. We have Robert's friend Stan has joined us in the microphones. Stan, what's your last name, by the way? Von Alst. Okay, so how long have you known Robert? Um, I think for about four years now, a big four years. <laughs> now, do you have a regular job or what? Um, on the moment, I am uh, plan to do a study maybe or something else, but I'm really involved in the... Uh, has a, an ability with computers. Yes. Uh, he's very talented, and in fact, Robert <laughs> it doesn't have any talent there. And so he helps Robert with that. He also has many clients whom he helps uh, with their computer problems. Okay, Stan, so you're the computer guru of that town. <laughs> okay, so you went out with Robert on this occasion to see crop circles. What was it like for you? Um, you mean the time that I saw uh, one happening? Yes. Yes, my... he wants you just to tell about that. Yes, it was a very wonderful event. It changed my life. Because I was a, I was a skeptic in a way. I I, I was not sure of, of the reality of all of this. And when I saw it, it, it was so amazing. It was so it, it really changed my life. You and Robert were simply out riding on yes. Robert's motorbike, right? Yes, yes. I uh, I can tell about that. Okay. It was, Robert had a, had a very um, had a, had the feeling that. Something was ready to go in the field, uh, a circle, and uh, we. Uh, I was uh, on the motorbike um, behind Robert. We, we were driving in the fields, and Robert had the feeling that there was something going to happen, and uh, we, we just uh, drive around. And on a moment, Robert stopped the motorbike, and we. Uh, yes, we, we we did go to uh, a field, a grass field. And uh, there was a very, um, how can I tell this, a very uh, lovely feeling, like another consciousness uh, in the area. It's hard to explain it because it, it's a feeling. And uh, from that moment, I, I think about a, half, a minute after that, we were standing in, in the grass field uh, on this moment, there was a, a big orange light bulb, I think uh, six meters in the air, six meters uh, uh, above the ground in the air and I, and I screamed to Robert watch, watch and it was a very big I think the size of a football orange light bulb in the air and after that the orange light bulb turned into three light bulbs there, there were coming two light bulbs from this one light bulbs and it, it's very amazing but I've, this three light bulbs changed to six and after that, uh, they, they uh, spin in the air very, very quick. And, and so quick that you see a line in the air. And this line of spinning light bulbs did go down and form a, a grass circle before my eyes. It, it sounds strange. And uh, when I tell the story to other people, they sometimes think that I'm crazy. But it, it's the truth. I saw this before my eyes. 
Ms. Roberts. And Stan, if I remember when you told me about this, yes. because this was the first time that you saw this happen, you were a yes. little scared, yes? Yes, I had a very, um, how, how can I explain this? A very lovely feeling, but th this lovely feeling was mixed with a, with a, with a shock because I saw something that, that's against my vision of the world. I, I wanted to believe Robert because it, it was a nice belief. If you see it, it, it changed very much. That's what I, I have been trying to tell people for a long time, that we don't <laughs> expect that other people will believe just because we say. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why I write in such detail about these events. But once you've actually directly had the experience in front of your face, yes. things change very quickly, don't they? Yes, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then the day after that, uh, I had also the the the, uh, the thought in my mind that it was a dream, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was the next real. day when you woke up, you thought yes, it was yes, when I was wake up because it was so unsure feeling, but also so wonderful to see that there is more and there, there is more about the lines of or reality in science. And it is Stan that we're speaking with right now. Okay, and I should ask Who's Stan. I wanted to ask you a quick question here. Let yes. me let me tell you one more thing, Gene. Sure. He's the guy who has shot the videotape, which has just been posted on Robert's website, where Robert was on camera the entire time. The picture you see there on those pictures will be of Stan. Okay, Stan, you're going to get famous online, and now people in Facebook are going to want to add you or Twitter. <laughs> but obviously we gather you're more savvy about computers. But before you met Robert, had you ever had any experiences in your life that were strange or even comparable um, to what you had with Robert Brown? No, not, 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 not as direct as this. Maybe some things that I thought, oh, it's coincidence, some telepathic experience when the line is going on or when someone calls you and you, you think about the name. And you know, that this general events, but this is so direct. I, I saw something before my eyes and it's so wonderful. But before I met Robert, I was a, a skeptic. But you became less of a skeptic after experiencing this stuff. Did you think maybe he was faking it? What was your feeling? Um, I, I had an had open mind. I, I was thinking that there, there is a, an, an option, that Robert was faking it. I, I had this in my mind as an option. And I, but I didn't believe that Robert was bad. I, I thought that he was faking it to inspire people. And uh, I was also a magician in the past and a mentalist, and I was interested in, 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 in faking paranormal things. You so you them. have faked these things? Uh, I was a magician and a mentalist in the past. So I you understand to... then, like, it, it takes one to know one. You know whether or not he's faking it because yes, you've yes, done I that. You've that done that. I have the ability to uh, okay. do that. <laughs> okay. All right. We're joined in this episode by Nancy Talbot and Robert Vandenbroek, and we're talking to Stan, who's Robert's computer guru, a former <laughs> mentalist, which, of course, is like the American TV show. Have you seen the American TV show, by the way? Mentalist? Uh, I, I don't think so. Okay. But, but, it's a but, TV show about a guy who's a former mentalist, becomes a consultant for police in California, and uses his oh, amazing geez. insights in oh, right. solving yes, crimes. Yes, but yes. in your case, <laughs> you, being a mentalist, being somebody who has done this sort of thing, you therefore were able to look at what he presented to you and determine mm -hmm. whether or not it was true. Is that correct? Well, he That's saw correct. in front of his eyes the crop circle happen. Sure, we understand that. Yes. After that point, after the crop circle, I was very sure that at least a big part of Robert was real. And it, it's very logic that when you see that, that, that there is no option that... that no. Uh, with I Robert believe. Vandenbroek and Nancy Talbot, joined by Stan, with Chris and Gene, you're in... The Paracast. America's number one source for independent talk radio for over a decade. We are the GCN Radio Network. 
If you want to get your website online and you need reliable service, first-class service at the lowest possible price, there's only one place to go. Well, DreamHost has a special promotion with our show where they'll offer you unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, one-click web apps such as WordPress, 24-7 support. You can save over $55. You want to know how? Go to DreamHost.com slash radio, DreamHost.com slash radio. Whether it's personal mail, whether it's business email, you want reliable, dependable delivery, freedom from spam, freedom from viruses. Well, Polaris Mail offers professional email hosting services for your personal or small business use. Each account uses 25 gigabytes of storage, an easy-to-use webmail interface, and full mobile sync. Sign up today for a 30-day free trial at PolarisMail.com, PolarisMail.com. Me, Jerry D. Hi. Jerry and his family, like you, are very concerned about world conditions and have gathered many emergency preparedness items, including turtle tough shelters. We have added two 24 foot turtle tufts to our supplies and feel very secure knowing our large family is ready for whatever the future may bring. Turtle tough shelters are not tents. They are permanent yet portable four-season geodesic frame shelters that are as strong as a cabin at a fraction of the cost and are easy to set up, take down, and move anywhere. Available in two sizes. Get your Turtle Tough Shelter and accessories included at TurtleToughShelters.com. That's Turtle, T-U-F-F, Shelters.com. Or call 801-623-3288. That's 801-623-3288. Or see them online at TurtleToughShelters.com. Turtle Tough Shelters, your all-season home away from home. Hello? Congratulations. For what? For losing all that weight. How'd you do it so fast? ASAP. ASA what? What's that mean? Are you ready to get as skinny as possible, as soon as possible, as simple as possible, and as sexy as possible? I'm listening. Then get with the ASAP program. It's real and it works. No smooth talk, no slick advertising, and no exaggerated claims of success. I've got to know more. Welcome to ASAP, as slim as possible. Whether you have 10, 20, or 50 pounds to lose, ASAP is your weight loss answer. ASAP targets the abnormal fat reserves and makes them available to be burned as fuel and contains no caffeine or hormones. Order ASAP at wholesale prices or join the team to share the business with others. Visit GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. Lose weight and look great with ASAP, as slim as possible. Love gardening but don't love seeing your hard work destroyed by wildlife? Then use the number one most effective deer and rabbit repellent you can buy, Plant Skid. Plant Skid repellent protects gardens, trees, and landscaping by emitting an odor that browsing animals associate with predators. So animals avoid plants before they nibble, not after. Plant Skid is made in the U.S. from non-toxic, 100% organic, environment, and pet-friendly ingredients. Other repellents wash off in the rain. Not Plant Skid. It's guaranteed to outlast all other repellents. Plant Skid was the first animal repellent to be OMRI listed organic and now comes in liquid spray, powder concentrate, or easy-to-use granular. Just sprinkle around your garden. For proven protection from deer, rabbits, squirrels, and other small rodents, use Plant Skid. Member tested and recommended by the National Home Gardening Club. Find a dealer near you at PlantSkid.com. That's PlantSKYDD.com. Ask about our new vole repellent when you call 800-252-6051. That's 800-252-6051. Plant Skid, proven plant protection, guaranteed or your money back. This is Jim Mosley, editor of Saucer Smear, and I'm here to say a good word or two about the Paracast, which I believe is the gold standard of paranormal radio. Listen to it if you can. So this story has taken a wider spectrum because we have someone now who Robert's known for four or five years, Stan, who knows when there are fakes and would be able to figure out when there's a fake, but now he sees something that he regards as the real thing. Yes, well, I, I believe... also have the video evidence of William Gazeki, and don't forget the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients of Robert's over all of these years who have also witnessed many of these things themselves. So when we add up to date here, and this is the problem that you saw, and I think I tried to illustrate to you here, 
And that is, it's very, very difficult to convince someone who doesn't believe any of this stuff that it's real because they can always find the alternate explanation, which is, okay, he's got these photos. They could be done in Photoshop. And we have to I'll depend on the word. If you're calling all of us liars. And then the point being here is that any photo of a UFO or strange phenomenon can be faked. You've got to depend on the people who report these things as to whether they're telling the truth or not. Yes, that's very true. If you're not open to these possibilities, then you probably won't bother to inform yourself. If you are open to these possibilities, uh, there's a lot of evidence in this particular case, and in, I think, many others, that very unusual energetic situations exist, whether they are completely natural uh, in nature, spontaneous energies that exist, we don't yet know. What we know is that some people have the ability to transmit or act as a medium for these energies, and a, a whole range of amazing things can then happen. I'd also like to uh, remind people, and there some of these clips are posted on YouTube and also on Robert's website, and I've put some still photos in the most recent article I've written about Robert's new website. Uh, the filmmaker William Gazeki from Hollywood, who did the um, Quest for Truth video about crop circles some years ago, went to visit Robert in December of 2010. And his purpose was, we're trying to see if we can get a DVD eventually shot about Robert, and he went to see whether or not they would get along, whether or not the strange things would occur when he was present. He took along professional uh, video equipment. And the very first night that he was with Robert, uh, the, an energy started to occur. Robert felt this. And William turned on his uh, video camera followed Robert around the house until Robert got to a spot where he felt that the energies were concentrated. And William was filming the entire time. And what you hear is Robert talking to William back and forth. And you see Robert with the digital camera held up in front of his face, clicking away periodically, stopping every so often to tell William that this is a man that he has died of bladder cancer. He goes on then a little bit later and he says his name, it is Aaron, Aaron. And they discuss that back and forth. Meanwhile, Robert is clicking and the video is registering this the whole time. At the end of the 15 or 20 minute session, they then stopped and the video camera comes in close behind Robert's LED screen. And Robert starts clicking back through the images to see if anything has in fact appeared. What has come on that very first session were very clear images, two totally different ones, of a man named Aaron Russo, who it turns out, unbeknownst to me or Robert or anybody other than William, this was William's mentor in the film business years ago. He did die of bladder cancer. His name, of course, was Aaron. And Robert also got, during the time he was shooting these pictures, the words freedom, freedom fighter, freedom. And it turns out that on this man's gravestone are printed the words freedom fighter. Now, William Gazeki was obviously very amazed at this. Uh, I had no knowledge about Russo, never heard of him. Robert had never heard of him. That this would be the very first image to come when William was present, Robert had never met William before, really knew nothing about him, that this man, this Aaron Russo, who was so important to William, would appear, was kind of amazing. On the second night that William was there, the energies came back again, and this time it was John Lennon who, who appeared. Now, Lennon John Lennon, oh boy. Lennon died in the year that Robert was born, and all he died Robert, in December 1980, to be specific. Exactly, and Robert was born in May of 1980. He had no, Robert had no particular knowledge. He was aware of the Beatles, of course, 
and he'd heard John Lennon's name. But he was not aware of the music particularly. It was way before his time. And during the videotape of that session, you see Robert, I, the part that touched me the most was at one point Robert was getting the name. He was describing John and he was getting the name, but he was very hesitant to actually say it. He couldn't believe it actually. And finally he turned to William and he said, his name is John. It's John Lennon. And then he apologized to John because he didn't know his music. He said, I'm so sorry. I didn't know your music. I am so sorry. But in fact, it was John Lennon. And interspersed with the images of Lennon was a creature, which uh, I think Robert called that one a star child. Didn't you, Robert? Yes, that's absolutely true. Yes, that was coming after. We have many other images, videotaped images, and eventually we're hoping that we can raise the money to put together a DVD that will give people a, a better overview where you've got a video camera running the entire time Robert does these things because then it's very easy to see that he's not holding anything in front of the camera, that the chip in the camera is brand new, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this raises the biggest question of all here, which is obviously, as you can see from the questions I asked, for our listeners, there are natural areas of skepticism that people are going to voice about claims of this sort. In the end, how do you interest mainstream scientists? They're going to look at this and say, ah, oh, just a bunch of silliness. How you do you make them take it seriously? If you tell me how, I guarantee you will do it. If I knew I would be opening my store tomorrow and selling the plan. I don't know what the plan Maybe is. Give it away to all of us who are trying to understand what these things are, where they come from, what they mean. But I think the key is here is how do you convince people who are naturally skeptical? And you understand why they're skeptical. This is oh, outside okay. of their experience. It's very unusual. They can see, as some of our listeners have already pointed out, that there are ways, other ways to reproduce these effects. And therefore, you have to take people at their word that they're the straight and narrow. But how then do you bring scientists into this and say, okay, let's investigate. We don't well, want to make Robert into a lab to, rat. Remember, Gene, it is not our job. It's not my job. Nobody pays me to do this. It's not Robert's job. Nobody pays him to do this. Uh, it's not our job to convince anybody. It is our job simply to prevent, to present the uh, information we have in the clearest format we can and offer it to those people who choose to then inform themselves more thoroughly. If, they, if they're not interested, they're not interested. That's fine. I'll tell you what, Nancy, tell our listeners where they can find more information about what you're working on. The two websites to pay attention to would be Robert's own website, which is www.robertvandenbroeke.nl forward slash home and the BLT website, which is just bltresearch.com. And we have both sites, by the way, linked at thepowercast.com, BLT Research and Robert's own site, so you can check out their information. And for Robert's site, keep your Google Translator working so that you can translate everything to English yes, or whatever language yes. you like. We will do. Chris O'Brien, by the way, his new site, OurStrangePlanet.com, is still being developed. We have the existing site. The new one is going to come up soon. Nancy and Robert, thank you both for joining us this week on the Paracast. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. The Paracast. Featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast. <laughs>